In today's video, I want to give you guys a quick overview of Sage Accounting. Good day, my name is Andrew Kubia. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network and I've been working on Sage Accounting probably since about 2010. So I think you're obviously watching this video because you're curious to see how Sage works. So the, obviously the purpose of the video is I want to give you guys a quick overview and just show you what the basics is about or what I like about the system. And um, yeah, so just before I start with the review so as well, remember just to give the video a like and remember to hit the subscribe button as well. And then you'll see that if you do want to sign up uh, for Sage, then I want to encourage you that in the description of this video, I'm going to share a link over there that you can use to sign up for Sage. What that then does is my referral code is embedded on that link over there. So when you sign up for Sage, I basically get brownie points with, with Sage. And that is obviously one of the benefits that I will get from doing these videos for you for free. So let me shoot down to my computer, then I can give you guys a quick um, overview of what Sage is like. Yes, so let me show you guys what Sage is about. So if you go to your homepage, if you go to Google and you go search for Sage Accounting, then you go to the one that says Sage Login, it will take you to the screen over here. We're going to go to this one over here. So if you end up on a different screen, just see if you can navigate to the system. And I think for the purpose of my demo, I'm going to just use the demo company for now. And it's always good for you guys just to go play around on the demo company before you actually sign up. And then all of a sudden you're sitting working on, on, on a live version. Because what happens is you actually have a 30-day free trial that you can use Sage before you actually need to sign up. <clears throat> so you'll leave the demo company button. And then what that then does, it takes you to the home screen of a demo company itself where you can fiddle around and see what it looks like. So you can see when you log into the system, you're welcome to the dashboard over there and you can see that you've got a to-do list, you've got some customer payment due report, some banking screen. So this is what the little thing over here, you can customize. There's a lot of different things that you can see. Uh, we can add widgets, they call these little things widgets, where you can customize this thing to make it look the way that you want it to look. <clears throat> so what's the starting point? So normally, once you register for Sage, the first thing that you're going to be doing, that you're going to be focusing on is you're going to go to this screen. And I've recorded the whole video on how to do the basic setup on Sage. And you'll find it on this channel as well. If you go to playlist and you go to Sage video, you'll find the whole basic setup one. And you can see this great app because we're working on the demo company. But that is the place where you're going to add your logos and the addresses and your VAT numbers and all that type of stuff. And you can see what's really important. I didn't cover it in the other videos, but there's a button for opening balances. So if you're transferring from one accounting package to Sage, then that is the place where you're going to enter the um, opening balances. So to give you guys a quick overview, there's basically just four or five screens that you can use often when you're working on Sage. The first one is obviously your customer screen and um, you'll see that if you go to customers, you can see you've got a little button there that says add a customer. Once again with customers as well, if you go check on the playlist, I've done a whole video just on customers and invoicing so you can go check it out in detail over there so i'm just going to give you guys a brief overview so you can add a customer there you can have a list of all your customers and you can see over there's all your customer transactions so what's really cool is you can look at customer quotes sales orders tax invoices recurring invoices let me maybe show you guys quickly so if you go to customer invoices then you can see over here is a list of all the invoices that is in the demo company at the moment once you start creating your invoices obviously it's going to be showing your data of your company over here so you can see there's a lot of different um, invoices that's made out you can then go and say add a tax invoice if you want and then you can fiddle around over here of how to add invoices to sage accounting and then what's really cool about sage oh, one of the, re the really nice things that i do like about sage is if we go back to this customer screen um you have the option over there under customer transactions to create customer recurring invoices and that as a really lovely functionality. Even with us at our accounting practice, we use that function all the time. So we preload all our invoices for the month because we obviously charge the guys a set fee on a monthly basis. So the first of every month, those invoices just get sent out automatically. They receive the invoices. We're going to talk about the banking just now, but as the clients pay, you allocate it to the payments. So that is a really nice functionality. I think that's one of the game changers for me about Sage is that function that they've got about customer um, recurring invoices and you can see the rest there's your customer credit notes receipts allocate receipts these two buttons you don't really use because uh, you will see if you look at the banking video that i did it basically covers it in the banking section over there <clears throat> then you can see customer write-offs and customer adjustments so those are things 
that you won't really work with often. Reporting is quite nice. You can see there's a button for customer statements runs. So that is, you press one button and then it sends out all the statements to all your clients at the same time. The report on the list of customers. And I think the most important one that you'll be using is this one of you that says customers. Balances days outstanding. So you can see you can actually right click on the thing. So open a new tab. So you can have different tabs running at the same time. So if I say view report, then I can see that you owes me money for how long. So you can see classifies 120 days, 90 days, 63 in current, and what the obvious total data is that is outstanding. So that is a really nice functionality where in one click you can basically see who owes you money for how long. So that's under the reporting one over there, and then the rest is just a lot of general reports over there, and the special you can see opening balances. And if you've got the paid one, which is really, really nice, is they've got another functionality under customers, which is your data manager. So if you can get that system to work, then what it does, it automates your emails that goes out to your customers. So if you send your invoices out on the 1st, by the 7th, if they haven't paid, they will get their first reminder. By the 14th, they will get their second reminder. By the 30th, that basically blocks the client that you can't invoice unless they've made the payment. <clears throat> so what's really nice, especially if, you, if you're busy, business person, you don't always have time to sit and send people statements and stuff. So that thing automates the whole system for you. So that is basically everything relating to customers. You're going to find it under that little tab over there. When it comes to supplies, it works exactly the same as customers. It's just the opposite side around. Remember this time you're working with purchases and this screen over here, you basically use if, you, if you've got suppliers where you buy on credit, where you don't pay the people immediately. So this is not like bank charges and telephone, these are supplies. If you're buying and selling stuff, this is the place where that is going to happen. So there you can add a supply. You can see you've got a list of <clears throat> supplies. You can see there you can do supply purchase orders, supply invoices, returns, payments, batch payments, allocate payments, supply adjustments. So a lot of things you can do. And then this one as well is really important again. <clears throat> this little one report over here is the important one. Supply balances stays outstanding. If you can look at this report, <clears throat> then you can see who you owe money and for how long you've been owing that guy money. So you can see 120 days plus this demo company owes 28 million rand, <clears throat> which is a, uh, which is really good. So that's your customers, and there's your suppliers. Like I said, I've done a separate videos on supply and supplier payments. So if you want to fiddle around, go check out that video as well. Go a little bit more into detail, and then you can come fiddle around on this demo company just to familiarize yourself before you start working with it. Items, you can work with items. The basic package on Sage is not <clears throat> made to be a very complex type of thing. So if you're buying one item of X and you're selling one item of X, then this is perfect, it will work for you. But as soon as you start getting into manufacturing or that type of stuff, then you actually need to get an add-on module where you can say one item of A plus one item of B makes one item of C, and that is where you would need that manufacturing or that, that, that I think they call it an item module that you have to buy extra to do those calculations on Sage. <clears throat> so so items, yeah, so if you're buying and selling stuff, you can bend a little bit into that thing. Um, it's not something that we work with too often. I'm not too keen about on working on items because what happens, it adds another step to the accounting package, which is, is fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you don't need to do it, then don't do it. The banking screen, you'll see that I've done a separate video on the banking as well, so you can go check out exactly how to do all the banking stuff on Sage. Um, you can see you can add your bank accounts, you can see you've got a list of bank accounts, and then the banking itself, I think it's probably one of the nicest banking systems that I've seen with um, on, on any accounting package, because what it basically does, let me see if I can just move myself out the way over here, so if I go to review transactions, then you can see you've got two tabs, so normally you can set up your bank feeds at your bank, imports the transactions automatically into Sage. So when you log into the system, that's going to show you what your current bank balance is. And then there's normal little button over there that you can see whether your bank is balancing. So that's always really important. But then it imports the transactions like this into the banking screen itself. So here, it will normally show all the transactions as unallocated expenses. It will look like that. So as you go through it, then you will say <clears throat> that there's, for instance, the telephone, or you bought electricity, then you'll say that you go look for the electricity expense account. And that is the way that you would just allocate it. Obviously, we'll double check your VAT and it then takes that amount and it puts it straight into the electricity account over there. <clears throat> then, if it is maybe a supplier that you're paying, then you will do that drop down. You can see there's your different options account, customers. If customer pays, you would choose that one. If you're paying suppliers, you would choose that one. 
If you're transferring between different bank accounts, you would use that one. And then obviously, if you're making VAT payments to SARS, you would use that one. But if it is a supplier, you'll choose a supplier. Here you're going to see which supplier it is that you're paying. And then on that little forky thing over there is the place where you would then allocate that payment against whichever invoice it is that you're busy paying for that supplier. And so let me just quickly move myself out the way again over here. So that is basically the supplies. But like I said, I've done a whole separate video on the supplies. Oh, not the supplies, the banking. Then you can go see exactly how the banking works. But once again, this is one of the easiest um, banking um, integrations that I've seen so far in any accounting package. It's very straightforward. You have to really mess it up to get this thing wrong. Um, the only thing is if your bank feeds are working, then don't enter stuff manually. Make sure that you only work with what was important over, imported over there. You can see here's the account, so there you can fiddle around with your list of accounts, accounting reporting groups, so that's more for your income statements. You can adjust opening balances over here, and then there you have a basic report. So you can see you've got the accountant's area over here. Obviously, we look at the VAT returns. That's what we normally work with. And you can see over here management reports. There's your profit and loss balance, your trial balance, and reporting. I've got a whole separate video that I've done on reporting on Sage as well. So you can always go check that video out as well. And you can see you've got a whole tab over here that says reports. So you can run reports on your customers, new suppliers, banking, VAT, financial statements. I'm just going to just click on one of those. Then you can see it opens up a screen to say profit and loss, balance sheet, trial balance. If we want to run a quick profit and loss and say that we maybe want to look at a year to date one, so we're going to say year to date and we want to look at this income statement on a monthly basis and then say view report. And then you can see that obviously the transactions pull through onto this report. So you can see what your turnover was for every month, what your cost of sales was what all your expenses was and what your net profit or losses for the year so far. So I think mm, the reporting on Sage is very basic. You know, there's a, other accounting packages out there that's a lot more complex when it comes to the reporting. But for what we're doing, small businesses, I think this is perfect, yeah. So I think in a nutshell, uh, that there's a short review of Sage Accounting. If you're busy looking at this video and you're not sure whether you should do it or not, remember once more, check in the description of the video for the link where you guys can sign up. Follow my videos, like I said, start with the basic setup one, then as the customers and invoicing, supplier, supplier payments, your banking, then obviously the reporting invoice. And I think I actually did a video as well on year, month end procedures, which is really, really important that you must also have a look at. Like I said, I've been working on Sage, I think probably since about 2010, and I really love the program. I think there's a lot of things that you can do on Sage, which is different from the old pastel itself. And um, yeah, give it a try if you like it. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for watching.